Obviously, I don't think it's gonna come to fruition. George and I were served legal lawsuit paperwork when we attended Otter Creek's town hall meeting. Or were we legally served? Hmm. Probably not, but Lynette hasn't stopped running her mouth with paperwork. Attending town hall, George and I knew we were gonna be served with this fraudulent lawsuit. And that's exactly what it is. Frivolous and fraudulent. Now, it's not even from Lynette, because here it says the plaintiff is Michelle Preston. The legal name of her biological daughter a resident of Iowa. You would think if a lawyer is going to take this case on, they would at least know who they are legally representing, and they would at least ensure that we were legally served, neither of which has actually happened. But what has happened, Lynette has filed her digit status, basically claiming she makes no money, doesn't have enough money to even pay the court filing fees. We're going to get that in a second. Before we do, let's take a look at this actual lawyer. Now, we're not going to share the lawyer's name because this is all about fame for these individuals. They are bottom barrel scrapers and they they want the fame that they think that comes with YouTube. Well, as Deuce is already finding out, oh boy. Yeah, the fame is not all what it's cracked up to be. Now, what has happened is a lot of shame and a lot of people laughing. So we might as well just keep laughing here just for a little bit, right? Let's look at some of the reviews for this actual individual. On his Facebook page, you can't even find his office in Google Maps. That should tell you something first off. But he does have a Facebook page that hasn't been updated since 2021, but there are people still leaving comments, such as the attorney and for the grifters of America. Grifters stick together while they grift one another. You gotta love that one right there. We've got uh, Marta Zizi Angelina Mustapata being the man. Uh, I think I got that name right. I probably didn't. But goes on to say, where's the work I hired you for? I tried reaching you and your wife. No good phone numbers. I paid for two cases. Haven't provided me with the work. You or your wife under investigation. Don't call me back. Took my money. Haven't done any work for the cases. 19 weeks ago. 19 weeks ago. You think that might be a little bit of an issue? No, that's a huge issue. And these are the type of lawyers that are coming out of the woodwork to represent Lynette. Oh, no! No, please, no! All right. And somebody else says, Yep, I figured his wife must be the assistant. I'll be filing a bar complaint today after what I just experienced. That was eight weeks ago. And it goes on. And you know what? I can keep Christy. Christy goes on to say, Did you resolve your issue with this lawyer? Nope. Okay, let's see what else. We got more. Um, Julia says that uh, his wife calls me screaming on the phone and then when I reply, I will not do business with them. It's be because it's so unprofessional. She made a comment then saying, don't contact this office. Like they're scam people or something. She tells me, I already told you three times, don't contact the office. Who says that? I have every right to contact the office and tell anyone about the behavior that I see fit from these lawyers. Seems real professional, right? Well, let's get into some more lack of professionalism. This whole paper right here. Lynette goes on under Deuce's control, right? With this other lawyer who's licensed in Florida who nobody would ever hire in their right mind to file a fraudulent or frivolous lawsuit, which, huh. She then fills out this paperwork for her civil indigent status, as you can see right here. In other words, I can't pay for anything. I can't pay for anything, including a house. All right, let's see what it says. Application here. I have one dependence. Okay. Annual spouse income zero. Wait, hold a second. She just got her soulmate back, and now she's claiming she has no money. Uh, by the way, crook receives money but we're going to see exactly what her net income is it's one thousand five hundred seven dollars and four cents now where does that come from keep in mind this is all public information 
Well, it's Social Security benefits. For her, she's receiving $736 a month. For the child, she's receiving $638 a month. In other words, almost half of her income comes from the child. Now, that's not a good reason to attempt to adopt a child. The only good reason to attempt to adopt a child is out of love for the child, out of love for upbringing and growth into a healthy child. Regardless of what issues a child may have, your goal, as I've always said with my children, is to raise not children, but highly functioning adults in society and culture. If you want to raise a child, guess what you get? You get man-child and women-child, and there's plenty of them out there on YouTube. They act like toddlers. They are not mature in any stretch of the imagination. What you want is to raise a adult. All right, so she also says she gets other income, SSI, $132.70. So now we know where all the income is coming from, except... She's not claiming any of these gifts coming from all of these individuals. You know, 7000 here, 3000 here, uh, 1200 from Lloyd. I don't think I see the stolen refrigerator in here either. Oh, okay, so she says cash. She has none. She circles no, none. Well, I don't know. There's $300 of Lloyd still missing. Uh, bank account, she has none. Money market account, she has none. Boats. This is a lie. This is a downright lie. There is a boat with all the other heaps of pile of trash in the front yard. There literally is a small boat in the front yard. That's a lie. Oh my goodness. Okay. Savings account. Nope. Stocks and bonds. Nope. Not like any of this is surprising, but uh, homestead real property. Whoa. Homestead real property. She put no. She marked it out and put yes. Huh. To homestead, which she is illegally claiming homestead, you must have a home based upon definition, which she does not. This is another lie. Motor vehicle. She circles yes, and then she crosses it out, and then she puts no. This is, this is too much here. Motor vehicle, circles yes, crosses out no. Homestead puts, this is just crazy. Non-homestead, real property, real estate, no. Other assets, no. Hmm. You mean her soulmate's not an asset? Well, we know he's the first part of that word. All right, let's keep going on. Uh, she says, check one. I do not expect to receive any more assets in the near future. Except those GoFundMes are still out there. Actually, the one from Landon that was put up by Deuce has been taken down, which Landon claims he had absolutely nothing to do with, and frankly, I believe him. So, we've got more questionable, if not illegal, activity based on the deuce. Okay, we've got motor vehicles. It says total liabilities. Motor vehicles, she's paying $732 a month liability on the Jeep Gladiator. Wait, oh, hold a second. What? Okay. Here she says she has no motor vehicle. Here she says she's paying $732 a month on the motor vehicle. You would think that the courts are going to want to figure this one out, huh? And then her home. This is liter no joke. Home, $360 a month. Okay. The camper is not a home. You can't homestead a camper on a piece of property. The camper is illegally on the piece of property right now. They're supposed to be building a home, which they are not. Okay, credit cards. Uh, she has a liability. It looks like she maxed out her credit cards at $10,000. By the way, credit cards are a tool. And they are to be used to work for you. If you work for the credit card, you're a fool. If the credit card works for you, it's a tool. So I use credit cards all the time. I never pay. I never pay a minimum. I always pay the balance at the end of the month. And that way I get money back, cash back. It's a tool that generates more income for me. Anybody who's running it up $10,000 obviously doesn't have money management, experience, knowledge, or is just complete and total irresponsibility. 
She goes on to say, I'm building a house, yet I have no money to do it. Right here. I'm building a house, but I have no money to do it. Mm. You're not building a house if you don't have money to build a house, right? You, we all agree this, right? If you watching, if you claim to be building a house, but you claim you have no money to build a house, are you building a house? No! You're not building a house. You literally are doing nothing except living illegally on a piece of property. All right. Uh, oh, boy. Yep. Okay. So... That, this is just ridiculousness, all right? It's complete and total ridiculousness, which will be brought up in court if this does continue through the court process. Now, we have communicated with her lawyer, and I'll share that communication with you in just a bit after I share this with you, because here's the crazy part of all of this. Even though it may be a frivolous and fraudulent lawsuit, it's under the presiding honorable, wait, dishonorable, and removed uh, Judge Craig Constantine de Thomas. And the only reason that is, is because Levy County is so small, there is only one civil judge. Everybody else, there's two others, and that's for criminal. And so everything by default goes to Craig de Thomas's. Now he should immediately recuse himself. He should remove himself from this. But just in case, my lawyers had a little bit of fun. And uh, while my lawyers are in communication with her lawyer in Florida, and, and I'll share that communication with you in a moment, uh, my lawyers asked, can we please, can we please, can we please write this motion to remove Judge Craig de Thomasis? And I said, absolutely, go for it. And so we've got an eight-page document which is filled with sarcasm and, and humor. So it says this, Jeremy Hale sworn... Uh, motion to disqualify Circuit Court Judge Craig de Thomasis. Okay, he should remove himself automatically. But this got in his hands Friday, right before he went home, so he could stew over it over the weekend, intentionally, on purpose. Jeremy B. Hales, herein known as the defendant, moves to disqualify Circuit Court Judge Craig de Thomasis pursuant to Florida statute. 3810, which gives litigants the substantial right to request disqualification of a trial judge for bias. And it goes on to say this, preliminary statements. Defendant prays. And I do. I pray a lot. As a matter of fact, I've been praying for quite a few people. And you may not believe it, and you may not uh, realize it, but I even pray for Lynette and Crook. They need Jesus. The greatest thing that they could do is get their lives together and give them to Jesus to fix them. All right. Will it happen? I'm not sure, but uh, I do believe in the power of prayer. So defendant, defendant prays that when the trial court reads this motion, the trial court will keep an open mind. Craig de Thomas is keeping an open mind. Hmm. Well, we'll find out. Number two, defendant prays that when the trial court reads this motion, the trial court will see the motion from the defendant's point of view rather than the judge's own unique perception of his ability to be fair and impartial. Now, we already know the judge doesn't think he's unfair. He doesn't think he's impartial. He doesn't think he's biased. He actually, he wrote us volumes, not a page, volumes about how incredible he is, showing his bias in those pages. And what this is saying is, judge, you got to stop thinking of yourself. That's very narcissistic. That's very selfish. You've got to think of the individual that's sitting in that courtroom. And you've already been dismissed, as we're about to see here. Point number three, the judge should participate in establishing, maintaining, and enforcing high standards of conduct and shall personally observe those standards so that the integrity and the independence of the judiciary may be preserved. It's Judge DeBias's job to make sure nobody can call him biased. It's his job to make sure that everything is professional and in order. And the one thing we've seen, his courtroom is anything but order. Unless it's me on the other side. That dang YouTuber! There's one thing we're learning about Levy County higher-ups. They don't like YouTube. And it's not they don't like YouTube. They don't like accountability. That's what they don't like. All right, let's keep going. Number four, 
in a de democratic society, one who assumes to act for the citizens in an executive, legislative, a judicial, that means a judge, capacity, must expect that his official acts will be commented upon and criticized as case law, New York Times versus Sullivan. And that means, oh, he doesn't like YouTube. So what? If you don't like YouTube, don't watch or get another job. I have the freedom to express my opinions. It's that First Amendment. And everybody on the other side of YouTube has the freedom not to click on, not to watch, and not to listen. I can exercise my First Amendment speech all I want. You can exercise your First Amendment <laughs> lack of wanting to hear from me. Now, I get it. It's not an amendment. You don't have to listen to anybody. Anybody at all. You can stop. And so if he doesn't like it, he doesn't have to watch. But we all know he's watching. All right. Based on this motion, number five, the First District Court of Appeals has only 16 days ago issued an extraordinary, extraordinary writ, specifically a writ of prohibition against this judge finding that he was not impartial in my case, which the case involved is the same plaintiff, Miss Preston, Lynette, and myself, Jeremy Hales, and my same attorneys in this matter, a copy of the writ of prohibition against Judge Craig de Thomas is being attached so in other words, it's all the same players in the same courtroom, and he's already been removed in one case. That's a good thing. Number six, a writ of prohibition against Judge DeThomasis was issued on August 7th, 2024, and was not final today until 12.01 a.m. You see it right there? That's hilarious, because this judge loves to go back to the record at 12 and uh, one second a.m. Yeah, this is sarcasm, and it's a slap back in his face because he's a fool. At 12.00.01. So, in other words, what happened with this writ of prohibition? The appellate courts actually removed Judge Thomas's, but Lynette actually had it a fair amount of time to appeal it. And even if she would have appealed it, it would have been wasted money that she doesn't have. And so I'm sure Silver Scam told her, no, we're not even going to touch it. And so they never even attempted to appeal to fight back as far as the removal of the Thomases. It was beyond evident to the planet how biased he was. And the unique thing of this as well as even though he was removed and there was time for them to appeal, this court actually went ahead as if it was never going to be appealed and assigned a judge to it, Judge Davis. And so it is officially 100% in the system now. They cannot appeal any longer. He is 100% gone. He is gone, baby. At 12 and 1 second a.m. On the day of the filing of this motion which we really didn't need to file, but kind of fun. So in, in this case, in the case where, uh, where he was actually removed, on February 28th, 2024, two days before the actual petition of writ of prohibition was even written, Judge DeThomasis commented on the record as to whether or not the still unwritten petition would be successful on its merits by stating, obviously, I don't think it's going to come to fruition. Obviously, I don't think it's going to come to fruition. From the position of the defendant, Jeremy B. Hales, this statement was mind-boggling. Which, by the way, that's sarcasm, making fun of Craig yet again. These are all terminology, things that he did in the courtroom. And now throwing it back in his face. And here comes the best part. Now that the fruit, remember, it's not going to come to fruition. Now that the fruit, number eight, no joke. Look, fruition and under fruition, you're going to see a couple lines down there, the fruit. It's so funny. <laughs> now that the fruit has been produced and Judge DeThomasis has been proven wrong, the defendant fears that Judge DeThomasis will seek retribution against him if he's allowed to be a judge on this case. Absolutely. This man will try to do anything to get 
me somehow in trouble even though I've done nothing. I don't know what the area's issue is with YouTube. I really don't. Except the aspect of accountability. Accountability. They don't want that accountability. The only time people don't want accountability is if they're doing something wrong. And that's why it's extremely important to be a citizen journalist. And many people have messaged us and say, hey, I've got things going on in my own town. I've got things in my own cases. Will you cover it? No, we will not cover it. Don't ask us to cover it. That's your job to cover it. We never wanted to cover these things. We never wanted this to happen to us. We're not going to go outside of our own lives and start covering other things. That's not who we are. This is a scrapbook and the news story of our lives. And so that fruit absolutely proved Judge Craig DeThomas is wrong. In issuing a writ of prohibition against Judge DeThomas's, the first district, the appellate courts, said this. Number one, Judge DeThomas's should have recused himself on one or more of Hales' motions to disqualify. Number two, Hales demonstrated a sufficient basis for disqualification, citing State versus RR Commerce in Florida 84, and explaining that the common Law writ of prohibition is an extraordinary judicial writ which may be issued by the court to restrain the unlawful. That means what he did was illegal. Unfortunately, he has immunity, which I don't think he should, nor do I think other officials should. So can I go after him for all this money? No. I can go after the state, but who does that hurt? That hurts the taxpayers because ultimately that's the taxes that are paid to the state. I can go after the state, but why would I want to hurt all the tax base and all the taxpayers if I can go after the state, if we find there was something very, very wrong going on? Okay, so, which may be issued by this court to restrain the unlawful exercise of judicial functions when no other adequate remedy is afforded by the law. Describing that it is appropriate for a court to issue a writ of prohibition in an emergency cases to forestall an impending and present injury. In other words, the appellate court said, this guy is beyond biased. And Jeremy, this is an emergency situation. And this is an extraordinary, illegal situation of what Craig has done. And we are removing him. I hope you get that and you understand the gravity, the weight of this. And what everybody in that Levy County courthouse must now be thinking about Craig to Thomas's. And the craziest thing is, I'm not the only one he's done this to. How many lives has he honestly destroyed? Destroyed. I mean, this is, I haven't even been heard in court yet, and this has had a negative impact on my life. Number three, once a basis for disqualification has been established, prohibition is both appropriate and a necessary remedy. You heard it from the appellate courts. The first district issued the extraordinary remedy of prohibiting trial court judge from continuing in this case without even knowing that the judge Craig de Thomas's, the dishonorable Judge Craig DeThomas has conducted not one, not two, but three ex parte proceedings, which was completely and totally illegal. Now, I have to give mad crazy props and respect to George. It was George that decided to go back and decide, did he have inappropriate communication with Lynette all these times before we even got there in Florida in court? And boy, did he ever, all of it, all of it illegal. And the appellate courts don't even know about that yet. That's what this is saying. The appellate courts don't even know that he did this illegal activity yet. It's, it is. It's mind boggling. It's mind blowing. But mind boggling works better for Judge Craig de Thomas's. These three ex parte proceedings were concealed by the trial court from all the parties. This is because there were many opportunities for the trial court to have told all parties about the three ex parte proceedings in the case, yet that never happened. Judge DeThomas's and Lynette Preston kept it all to themselves, which was illegal. Number 11. Videos of the three ex parte proceedings, which we have shown on the channel in the aspect of accountability. We want Levy County residents to know what this man has done and is doing and needs to be stopped so it's never done again. 
and I'm going to do everything I can, I promise, within my sphere of influence to make sure this man never gets voted in on that bench, which he never was in the first place. He was appointed after another judge stepped down. And even then, there's a lot of shady things with that judge stepping down. All right. Uh, they were only recently obtained just to see if anything else was not provided to the parties. Obviously, that's what happened. These videos show that during these three ex parte proceedings, documents were submitted by Lynette Preston to the judge for his review, which he did review. That's illegal. Could you imagine if you and I did this? We'd be arrested. We'd be jailed immediately. He has judicial immunity. It's illegal what he did. All right. Uh, request for affirmative relief was made by Lynette Preston. Legal advice was given to Lynette Preston by Judge DeThomasis. Additional information about the case was provided to Judge DeThomasis by Lynette Preston. And Judge DeThomasis told her that he knew that the defendant in the case was a YouTuber. Hmm. I wonder if he knew what this was going to end up being, you know, all over the planet, people literally watching on their cell phones. All right. See Canon one of the code of judicial conduct, an independent and an honorable judiciary. Now, when we talk about the code of conduct in Canon one, this is what every judge has to submit themselves to or what they affirm to. The what the, you know, it's like the Hippocratic oath, right? Of a doctor, they say, This is what I'm going to do and I'm going to be about. Well, the same is for judges, this is what they're supposed to be about and what they're supposed to do. They take an oath to this. See, Canon One of the Code of Judicial Conduct, an independent and honorable judiciary is indispensable to our justice in our society. A judge should participate in establishing, maintaining, and enforcing high standards of conduct and shall not personally observe those standards so that the integrity and the independence of the judiciary may be preserved. The provisions of this code should be construed and applied to the further that objective. In other words, he broke number one, canon number one in this oath. It's crazy. By the way, footnote down here, which is pretty funny. This is the footnote down here for some of the other parts up here. At the start of every hearing, which all parties presented in this case, Judge Thomasis would begin with a rather lengthy explanation of the status of the record. Remember all those times? Well, on this date, at this and this and this to the second time, beginning with the first uh, lengthy explanation of the status of the record, beginning with the first filing by Lynette Preston, September 2023, but never mentioned once, never mentioned once anything about these three ex parte proceedings, which over 20 minutes of exchanges occurred between himself and Lynette. Illegal. Number 12. Mind boggling, right? Just like in the motion, mind boggling. And he tried to cover it all up. He would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for those pesky YouTubers and those incredible lawyers. Mark Feather, Randy Shockett, Doreen Ingalls. What a team. I would have gotten away from. Hey, if, okay, all right. If you had to, if you had to take myself, George, Mark Feather, Randy Shockett, Doreen Ingalls, and we were all part of Scooby-Doo, who would each character represent? Okay. I kind of feel like I'm Scooby-Doo. Would you do it for one Scooby snack? Okay, but let me know in the comments who represents everybody. If we were driving the mystery machine right now, who would all of us be represented? I guess it's kind of easy for you guys, for the ladies, for, for George and, and Doreen, because there's only two ladies, but um, you let us know. You let us, I'm just curious, just because it's funny. If there was a cartoon of us five, that would be, and you know what? This whole series is literally us five. So, all right, number 12, a judge's neutrality should be such that even the defendant will feel that his trial was fair. This is case law, Williams versus the state in Florida. See also Amato versus Winn-Dixie stores, Nathanson versus Nathanson, and it goes on and on. Number 13, no judge has been disqualified yet in this case, okay? So while I don't believe this case is going to go forward by any stretch of the imagination, I'm going to share with you why in just a moment. Judge Craig DeThomasis has yet to actually remove himself or recuse himself, and he may not even know it's on his docket yet until he got this on Friday. But he definitely knows now, and yes, this is a slap in his face. 
And frankly, he, he deserves much more than that. And I don't mean physically, I mean legally. What he did was illegal, it was wrong. And when a judge has immunity and can't be held accountable for that, I think that's completely and totally wrong. I don't like it, the politicians, I don't like it, that judges, I don't like it. You know, even officers have a degree of immunity. What's good for all, or what's good for one should be good for all. We should all have the same standards. Number 14, judicial neutrality is critical to our legal system. Whether a motion to disqualify a judge is legally sufficient requires a determination as to whether the alleged facts would create a reasonable, prudent person, a well-grounded fear of not receiving a fair and impartial trial. See McKinsey versus Super Kids Bargain Store. Wherefore, this is the conclusion, Jeremy Hales, having met all the requirements for to bring this motion respectfully, I don't respect the man, I respect the system, respectfully requests Judge Craig de Thomas to disqualify himself from the proceeding further in this cause, and that another judge be assigned to the case, together with any further relief from this court deems just and equitable. And then... You, you, you're gonna have you're gonna have my signatures, but here's probably uh, the the best part right here is is more attachments in regards to him being removed and the explanation from the appellate courts. So automatically, Judge Craig de Thomas should be recusing or removing himself. But the other aspect of it, this horrific lawyer, in other words lack of clients, and obviously uh, more time on his hands than he knows what to do with, is going, uh oh, that's a YouTuber. He might have some money. Well, that's no reason to file a frivolous lawsuit. And so what's happened in this case, both George and I have filed for an extension in a motion. So motion form, extension. We've given them so much time and this is gracious on our part. I, I want to make this so abundantly clear. This is extremely gracious on our part because this man was recruited by Deuce, who doesn't know what ethics is, doesn't know what honorable means, doesn't know what, and we could go on and on, right? And probably has been promised all kinds of things that don't exist, that can't even be received. And so... This individual, this other lawyer in Florida that is signed on to represent Lynette is given so many days to actually remove this case, dismiss it of his own will. Because if he doesn't, he's going to incur countersuits, which he personally will be liable for out of his own pocket. He will not be making any money. He will be spending all the money and he will be paying Myself, George, and two other individuals as well. That's Florida law. Oh, and if there are individuals out there such as Deuce that actually think, oh no, we have a case. Well, no, they don't. As a matter of fact, we sent case law to this lawyer as well. Oh, by the way, uh, within the statute they're citing that they can sue, oh, there was a YouTuber issue and a lawsuit. And guess who won? The YouTuber. Guess who's going to continue to win? The YouTuber.